Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I want to welcome everyone to start, build, and grow your business with the SBA. We have uh, Norm Ang uh, from the from the SBA to to present on, on behalf of the SBA, and we also have um, two participants or from our sponsor today, which is the East Cambridge Savings Bank. And uh, we will be doing a little bit back and forth about mid midway into the presentation um, to discuss the relationship between the bank and the SBA, which I think you'll find absolutely helpful. Um, as we get going, I wanna just talk to you a little bit about SCORE, just in case you're new to SCORE. Uh, there's three important things that SCORE does. Uh, one of them is the information provided on our website. Strongly encourage you to take a look if you have it. There's lots of fantastic template, templates that you can download, not just business plans, but there's marketing plans and um, all, all cash flow statements, all kinds of information. So I, I strongly encourage you to take a look at all of the information that's provided. Uh, of course, we do workshops and webinars. You're here today. Please keep an eye out for our, our uh newsletters or take a look at what we have offering on our website. Uh, the most important thing that SCORE does, however, is the mentorship program. Our, our mentors are volunteers, so our mentoring is always free and confidential to everyone throughout the entire process. Uh, our mentors come to us from all different backgrounds with lots of different experience that they want to share with the small business community. Uh, we're working with folks that are in the beginning stages trying to find out if small business is right for them. We're working with those that are in the planning phase and we're working with those that are already in business. Uh, people come to us for many different reasons. Uh, they need help with their bookkeeping. They need help with the marketing plan. They need help with a business plan. You name it, we've probably got a mentor that can help you. And if we don't in our chapter, we'll reach out to the district or to the national level to find somebody to help you. A first session is going to be a get to know you. They want to know what your goals and challenges are, and they're going to help you put together a plan to, to overcome and achieve. Uh, they work as a team. Our mentors uh, will seek information from other mentors. They will bring in other mentors into co-mentor, so to speak. And uh, you can have a team after a couple sessions because they wanna make sure you're getting all the information you need to be successful. So how do you get a mentor? Really, really easy. You can use that QR code that's on the screen or you can go to score.org. There is a blue box, put your zip code into that box that will match you to the chapter nearest you. And then that chapter will use the information that you put in to match you to the mentor that can help you the best. Um, so let's get going. I'm gonna just a little bit of housekeeping up ahead of time. We are using the Q&A tab. We do anticipate a decent number of folks today. So Q&A button on your Zoom bar to submit questions to the presenter or to the bank. Everything else can go into chat. And I'll be monitoring both, but um, it's easier for me to not lose track of questions if they're in Q&A. Uh, we are recording and we will post that recording to the website, score.org slash Boston, local workshop tab under, um, then underneath that is previously recorded. Uh, give me 24 to 48 hours to get that posted, but that, that's where you'll be able to find it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull my share down and give um, our representative for the bank, Robert Nichols, a moment to talk about East Cambridge Savings Bank. Thank you, Teresa. That that was nice. Uh, that was great. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining the webinar this afternoon. It's nice to be back with SCORE again. Uh, SCORE has been a great partner to work with, and we continue and are willing to provide these outstanding workshops. East Cambridge Savings Bank is a mutual savings bank. We are not a publicly traded company and we do not have investors. Mutual savings banks have been around since the early 19th century and are still quite common in New England. Our bank was founded in 1854 and has been operating with the same name and charter since then and have never been acquired or sold to a larger bank. Since East Cambridge Savings Bank is a mutual savings bank and does not have shareholders, we reinvest profits locally through mortgages, loans for small businesses, and supporting nonprofit organizations. Thank you. Back to you, Teresa. 
Thanks, Robert. And uh, Robert and Lynn will be available for questions and uh, they'll be um, joining in the middle, uh, as I mentioned previously. So I'm going to uh, introduce our main presenter. We have um, Norman Ang from the SBA. It's all yours. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. It's a bit rainy here in Boston. Uh, wherever you are, I hope it's dry and warmer. Uh, I will uh, take approximately 45 minutes, hopefully, and uh, leave a little room for questions with this presentation. And, uh, you know, just want to thank Teresa and Boston Score again, their amazing partners, and uh, also our banking partners, East Cambridge. They're, they're also, you know, top notch and uh, always appreciate uh, having extra um, uh, partners here to present with us together. Uh, first thing I want to do is just walk you through our website, our website address is sba.gov slash ma, and this will take you to the Massachusetts District Office website. Over here, um, in every state across America, there is a district office um, and uh, website. So if wherever you are, you can just search. Um, currently, uh, one of the things that are, is going on is National Small Business Week Awards. So if you're a small business owner and you think uh, you have a special story to tell uh, of resilience or, you know, uh, family or uh, business development, whatever it may be, you can go here and look at all of the different categories that we're currently accepting nominations. And uh, for, especially here in Massachusetts, we have um, family-owned, minority owned, veteran owned, women owned. So we're currently accepting nominations up until December 7th. So if you have a special story to tell, nominate yourself and uh, you do have to submit paperwork and a package. Shoot me an email if you're interested. Uh, other things that you can find here, if you go to doing business in our area, cl click see our guide here. There's a bunch of different resources and in, in, in addition to a link where you can find counseling services uh, close to you, local assistance. Uh, in addition, in the SBA lending in our area uh, segment, there's a download lender list. Uh, it'll show you a list of all of our area SBA approved lenders here from all different institutions uh, across the Commonwealth. Uh, another thing you can find is a link to lender match, which is like a online matching tool for you a borrower and another bank so uh we leverage technology uh pretty well here at sba so it's a just a quick way for you to try and find a lender i'm going to talk more about that later uh loan programs and um different organizations that we partner with including black economic council boston public library possible zone so all the information locally is here, there's also an upcoming events uh, tab here. You could find different events that are happening. Most are still uh, virtual. However, there's there's an increase in in-person events and uh, uh, in, in our office, especially, we're trying to do more in-person events. There's also success stories here. If you're interested in some local entrepreneurs that you wanna learn about, uh, I write these success stories, but just wanted to walk you through that. In addition, if you're on LinkedIn, love to have you throw us a follow to our office. So go to LinkedIn if you're on there and search SBA Massachusetts District Office and um, please follow our LinkedIn. Um, now what I'd like to do is um, just go through a slide deck and um, give our presentation on powering the American dream. You know, um, our role within the entrepreneurship ecosystem is all about helping you. And um, the way we do that, we help you plan your business, launch, manage your business and grow. And so it's our 70th anniversary. Um, so uh, we've been around uh, enacted by the Small Business Act. Um, it became law uh, over 70 years ago. So it's a great milestone for us at SBA and we're proud to be serving the American people. Um, as you know, the past couple of two, uh, years, uh, we we had the crisis and the pandemic affect all of us across the country. And uh, I was privileged to be a part of the team that um, helped get 
billions of dollars on out into the hands of small business owners to, to help them get back on their feet. Okay. And so we are the go-to resource for capital resources and um, uh, in the areas of counseling, uh, access to capital and um, getting uh, back from disasters. Uh, we also offer government contracting assistance in the form of certification. So if you have something to sell to the to a federal government agency, we also certify you so you could do business and sell your services and products to the government. This is a picture to, uh, to our website. Again, it's sba.gov slash MA. So a couple of success stories nationally. Uh, has anybody heard of any of these companies? You might have uh, uh, heard of a few, Nike, Apple, Yankee Candle, Chobani. They all have one thing in common. They all started with some form of SBA help. Uh, I'd like to share uh, the story about Yankee Candle, us being in uh, Massachusetts. Um, so the founder uh, was actually a high school dropout, and um, he was really... Uh, just sort of making a Christmas present for his mother uh, at around this time. And uh, what he did was just pour a bunch of wax and a wick into a, a mason jar. And uh, he started selling them to family and friends and started Yankee Candle. And so uh, it's in every mall in America, pretty much. Um, and I'm sure most of us have a Yankee Candle in our homes, but... Um, Yankee Candle, the owner, um, received an SBA loan that was co-signed by a friend at a very important time in his business, and it helped him scale. So that's um, a, a local success story here in Massachusetts. Uh, also, Chobani yogurt. Uh, I'm sure how many have some Chobani yogurt in their refrigerator right now? Uh, I do, actually. And um, so Chobani yogurt was started by immigrant named Hamdi Ulukaya, and um he started off with a 504 loan, an SBA 504 loan. He bought uh, commercial real estate and equipment using that loan. And so um, several years back, I want to say about uh, seven, five to seven years ago, Choban, the owner, Hamdi Ulakaya, he actually gave uh, ownership in his company to his employees after being wildly successful. And um, he, he leveraged the SBA's 504 loan program. Okay. Um, other success stories that are local, iRobot. Anybody own a Roomba in their house? Those little circular disc um, things that just vacuum at all times of day. Anyways, that technology was uh, started as uh, here in Bedford, Massachusetts. The company iRobot, they uh, leveraged the program called SBIR, Small Business Investment uh um SBR small business investment resources and um what what that is is a um a sort of like a grant award program where government agencies will uh give you free money and um if you have a problem to solve that the government has so um I like to just sort of explain it as um they will, if you have a white paper, so in this instance, iRobot had this technology, right, where they, they were, um, there was a war going on in Afghanistan and uh, Department of Defense had an issue because too many of our soldiers were being killed uh, from mines in the ground. So there were bomb, like mines in the ground, sort of like bombs underneath the soil. And so iRobot had a technology said, hey, we could possibly solve this issue uh, we have a robot which can sense that type of stuff. So the government gave them money to write a white paper and also uh, funding, follow on funding to commercialize this product. And so when they um, kept developing their technology, it eventually became iRobot, which is in every, um, which is in a lot of homes today and um it's a um, vacuum cleaning technology uh but irobot also um funded through an sba program sbir um 
So we do offer uh, one of our bread and butter things that we do is just we, we offer a lot of learning. So uh, check out all the different courses and workshops locally uh, that we offer within our research partner network. Um, uh, it's one of the best things that we offer, I believe. Uh, so uh, you are not alone in, in, in this journey, whether you're just starting out or you are a uh, seasoned veteran or just trying to build. Um, we offer all types of assistance. Actually, we recently moved away from uh, a communication system that um, where you could sign up for updates. So um, as of right now, we're actually transitioning from Gov Delivery to a system called Microsoft Dynamics. So after this, actually, I will ask uh, Teresa if we could grab the emails and add you to our updates. This, um, SBA.gov slash updates is, is no longer available, but uh, our office email is massachusettsdo at sba.gov. If you want to reach me, I'm norman.ang at sba.gov. I'll throw it in the chat later. Um, and just to keep moving, uh, yeah, we have a network of uh, different partners such as SCORE. So in addition to SCORE, we have a Women's Business Center, Small Business Development Center, and a lot of different uh, branch score offices throughout the state. So if you're located somewhere else uh, within Massachusetts, there's six chapters, just to let you know. Uh, as I mentioned, there's also the Small Business Development Center. Uh, they also, uh, within their network, have something called um, Apex Accelerators, which helps with government contracting. And we also have a Massachusetts Export Center, which is a quasi state agency that helps small businesses with international trade. If you're interested in trying to find customers outside of the America, the United States, then um, you can explore that. Actually, there's a export expo coming up in January. I'll, I'll talk about later, but msbdc.org, you could find the closest center to you at that website. Center for Women and Enterprise is our Women's Business Center, and they have offices in Boston and Westboro. So um, definitely check them out. They do great workshops as well, mostly free, and uh, serving women. They're always uh, hosting great events. I was recently at uh, this Women of Color Business Summit, which was held at Babson College, and it was just an amazing event where they bring together women, and it's a safe space where women can connect with other women. If you're a veteran, we also offer services to members of armed forces uh, and also their families, uh, especially their spouses and uh, family. Um, there's a, several uh, special events that they do periodically that um, uh, are, are, are specifically designed for veterans. And so uh, we definitely reach uh, encourage you to reach out to Veterans Business Outreach Center. And it's housed within our Women's Business Center, CWE, which is why you see the website, cweonline.org slash VBOC. All right, at this time, I do want to invite Robert and Lynn to uh, turn on their cameras. And uh, we're going to talk lenders and uh, access to capital. Most people know the SBA uh, from uh, access to capital and money, right? And so um, we offer a guarantee, all right? And so usually um, a bank will will um, offer a small business, you know, the loan directly if, you know, they get approved. But where the SBA comes in is we offer the guarantee to help them to the yes decision. And so at this point, uh, I just want to talk about um, access to capital. And so I like to show this slide first because it um, shows you the whole spectrum of how to get money, right? On the left side of the spectrum, it's self-financing, job saving, credit card, family, crowdfunding. Uh, some use ecosystem funding, business plan competitions, government grants, incubators, technology transfer, 
Well, SBA lending is sort of on the right middle right spectrum where it's sort of, um, you know, um, in between getting a home equity loan and getting a, a regular commercial loan. And then the right side equity VC is sort of, it's, it's more onerous. It's, it's harder to get, right? If you're trying to get someone to invest in you and angel funding, venture capital. But I want to ask uh, Lynn and Robert here, what your thoughts are on this. Um, so can either one of you tell our audience about the process uh, between commercial and SBA? How does that work? Um, does anybody, either of you want to take a stab at that? Hey, Robert. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, 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 Lynn, you can go ahead. Um, I, I'm, I'm more familiar with, with the 504, but if, if you want to touch base a little bit on, on the 7A, um, or maybe it was just an overall. Oh, you're on mute. You, you'll need to un unmute. I'll Sorry. Just... So basically what we do is we start having a conversation with the business owner to find out what stage of the business life cycle they're in. So for example, if it's a startup, um, you, you know, that makes a difference on how we're going to fund, potentially fund the request versus more, a more mature customer, but we learn as much as we can about the company. I'm going to kind of use a startup, for example. Um, first of all, startups are very, very hard to finance. Basically, 73% of all startup companies sell fund, as Norman was alluding to, sell fund um, using their own personal funds to start up their business. And so the re remainder is, is possibly able to get financing through the bank. Typically for startups, banks love the SBA loans because it gives um, an extra level of comfort around collateral. And what do I mean by that? So a startup company, again, I'm using this as an example, um, Collateral is very, very important to a bank because that's how we're going to get repaid if the business um, does not succeed. Um, so that's a very important factor. And a lot of times for a startup company, and even for an early stage company, companies maybe five years or less, they may not have a lot of collateral uh, to secure loans. So what, what some people might use for collateral is their home or uh, maybe equipment or whatever, but sometimes they don't have that or uh, whatever they need a loan for, like a, a line of credit, they may not have some assets that the bank can use to for collateral. So again, we love the SBA loan because the SBA will provide a guarantee. Um, so, so depending on which SBA product they use, the SBA will provide a certain percentage of, of a guarantee. So for the SBA Express loan, the SBA provides a 50% guarantee. So if there's a collateral shortfall that the borrower has, right. we could use the SBA guarantee to try to get it as close to 100% as possible. Um, another example would be for like a 7A loan. That, that's an 85% guarantee. We love 7A loans if there's a collateral for shortfall. So that's how banks work uh, with SBA loans. It's really to come up a lot of times with that collateral shortfall so that we're able to provide a loan to the borrower. That Those guarantees give banks comfort. Um, I right. hope that's making sense. Uh, yeah, thank you, Lynn. Um, well, one thing I, I wanna point out is that um, the 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 SBA. So if the the, the SBA will not make a, a bad loan good, um, right, right. So just like want to want to point that out. That that's I, I learned that that early on. So uh, you need to have the cash flow, the collateral. Um, yes, you will still have to have a viable business and a business plan spelling out how you will repay the loan back mm -hmm. and all that. It's just that if the if the borrower or the applicant happens to have you know, some sort of shortfall in like credit score or like Lynn was saying, collateral. Um, those are the most common things where um, a bank will use 
the help of SBA to get it over to that green line, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Ro Robert, um, you want to talk about 504? Tell us about yeah. that. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so the the five hundred four is a nice program, and and one one that I've had extensive uh, experience with um, at at this bank as as well as previous banks. So, how it works is that the SBA partners with with a bank. It could be us, or it could be in, in any bank. Uh, the borrower only contributes ten percent. Uh, the bank provides one loan for fifty percent, and the SBA provides secondary loan for forty percent. Um, so, for example, if you have a, a one million dollar project, um, the bank loan would be five five hundred thousand dollars. The SBA loan would be four hundred thousand dollars, and obviously, the the remaining one hundred thousand dollars would be the borrower contribution. So, the total amount is is one million dollars. Um, so, so popular popular industries for for the five hundred four. Um, typically, our, our restaurants, uh, existing startup uh, manufacturers, service or retail industries, um, medical, it could be uh, veterinarians, um, MDs, dentists, chiropractors, uh, laundromats, car dealerships, uh, car washes, gas stations, um, breweries, uh, a, a lot of breweries um, in, in the Thanks. area. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And then a, a lot of them go go with the 504. Um, uh, nurseries, uh, who, uh, specific example, like landscaping, uh, any specific example of a, a deal you've recently done without have like plugging the business or. Yeah, it was a, it was an auto body garage in Malden. Uh, we, we okay. ended up using, using the, the 504. Excellent. On and there was another one for a, right in downtown Boston, the financial district. It was, uh, it was an owner occupied. Um, he occupied 100% of the property, and it was a, a two-story level uh, personal fitness. Um, okay. Existing business. He wanted to buy, buy the space he was in. It was for sale. He occupied 100% of it, and um, that that was an, an, another example of of the 504. So it's just a great time to to purchase. Right. Um, what is the interest rate right now for for five hundred fours? The interest rate um, on on the bank side is right around seven and a half percent. If you look at the the SBA, um, I believe the fixed part of it. So another reason why a lot of borrowers like like the SBA is that the SBA portion, I believe, is fixed for twenty five years. Um, Norman, uh, is is that correct? I believe it's fixed for twenty five years, and uh, I think it depends on. Uh, yeah, and this slide this is generally ten to twenty years. Um, okay. Okay. However, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is fixed, though. So you do lock in that rate, right? You lock in that rate. So if you were to receive a five hundred four loan, maybe a year or two ago, at who knows three and a half percent, that that's fixed yeah, for a long period of time. Totally low. Yes. Yep. Yep. And the interest rate uh, this month is seven point three two percent. That's prime, right? Or Seven oh, the the, the on the SBA side, yeah. Okay. So the SBA part would, would be would be fixed um, right now at seven point three two. The bank we're we're we're, we're right around seven and a half. Got it. Got it with the CDC. Yeah. Uh, I have, next I have slide. a question. I have a question sure. that was just put in by someone. Is there a minimum loan amount? Um, Lynn, I believe it's is it fifty thousand for for an SBA Express seven A. Oh. Sorry, for an SBA 7A, um, let's see, it can go even, it could, it's starting at saying zero to 25,000 and then it gives the rate. So the it, the loan amount, I don't think there's a minimum for a 7A. Um, I believe it could just be like. There's a, there's maximum those. For a 7A, the maximum is 5 million. For an SBA Express, it's the maximum amount is 350. Um, I'll leave all so these it, questions to the lenders. <laughs> okay. It yeah. depends yeah. on it depends on which program that uh, SBA program that you're going to be um, working right. with. Yeah, I just wanted to um, show this uh, slide uh, about a success story I wrote about uh, when I first started uh, working at SBA. 
uh, in South Boston, Southie. There's uh, this building here. I don't know if anybody's familiar with it, but uh, there's a Domino's Pizza. But um, the owner is um, Wesley Huang here, and uh, he helps Chinese restaurants and all any restaurants uh, build their kitchen with steel fabrication shop in the back. And so he used the 504 to purchase this building. And so just to sh let you know, there was multiple units. So was, I, I believe this was a five unit building. Mm -hmm. And so as long as it's owner occupied, you can rent out units to other small businesses. And so that's another beauty of this 504 program. Um, it, you can collect rent from Domino's Pizza. I think there's also a uh, barbershop on the first floor now. But uh, he owns three. Uh, he's occupied in about three of five uh, units within the building. And so it's just a smart um, investment tool. Um, and um, anything else to add, uh, Robert or Lynn, with that? No, I mean it's it's a great program if you want to, if you want to save your cash and put little money down so that you can use the other cash to make other investments in the company. It's it's a really good program. Yeah, yeah. it is nice. Again, it is only ten percent down, which is a uh, a, a nice nice uh, selling point. Uh, yeah, normally uh, I've I've been told in the past that uh, normally they would ask for twenty to thirty percent down in in a conventional market. Is that correct? Usually it's twenty five percent down. Twenty five percent down, but here you're you're only uh, being asked to commit ten percent, so that leaves you with more money in in your bank account to do other things. All right, all right. Um, the next program we offer at the SBA is something called a micro loan, and it's small loans up to fifty thousand, and. Um, Glad I have. I'm not sure if these interest rates are are um, still correct here. This is this old slide, but um, uh, if you're a small business that just needs under 50k, this might be a good program for you. Um, while I have you, Lynn and Robert, ha do you guys work with any of our micro lenders? This is a, a list of um, some of our micro lenders here. Again, this might be I'm not sure. It might be different lender uh, micro lenders, but these are the ones in Massachusetts. Have you guys worked uh, with any of these? Or I know you guys refer to each yeah. other. I, I have not. It, it would be a referral, though. Uh, I yeah. mean, I know Dorchester Bay, yeah, Dorchester Bay. Uh, EDC. That's a very uh, active one in the greater Boston area uh, that I know of. Okay. Awesome. Um, before I... Um, uh, before we move on from this segment, uh, Lynn or uh, Robert, do you have any other uh, things, suggestions or feedback or tips and tricks for our listeners, our participants to add before before we go on to the second portion? I, th I think before before you go to a bank and apply, you, you need to be, get really organized um, you need to know, you need to be able to articulate what exactly you want, you know, how much money you think you're going to need, what you're going to need it for. Um, and to do that, you can prepare by figuring out, you know, what does the cash flow, what does your company's cash flow, what kind of a loan amount would it support? And SCORE is an excellent resource to work with before you go to a bank for financing to figure that out. Um, so right. it's really important to know what your company's cash flow is and how much uh, money it can uh, support, um, you know, what the potential co collateral will be. For sometimes with uh, SBA loans, they require a business plan. And again, SCORE is a great resource. If you don't know how to do a business plan or you want someone to look it over, I always recommend people to go to SCORE for that. Okay. Um Great tips. Yeah. So go to our resource partner network and get prepared first. Don't just walk in with your with your flip flops and shorts and say, I need a loan. I've seen that too. <laughs> what about you, Robert? <clears throat> what about you, Robert? Any tips and tricks to working with a lender, getting so, approved? Uh, so so make sure you, you have your, your your tax returns. Make sure you you have a PL. Make sure um you have projections because the SBA will want projections. 
um, on your business. So uh, the SBA looks very favorably um, toward projections, and I, I've seen businesses um, – Really, that that this is be, being approved by the SBA because of their their projection. So it's a very very important to have those. Got it. That's a great tip. There is another question from Mutima Hassan. What is the major difference between an angel funder and a venture capitalist? My understanding is that angels use their own money to invest, and then venture capitalists they they you get money from other folk, other investors, and they they sort of use other people's money. Is is do you guys? have anything to add with that those are our two questions there not so much on the vc side um angel investors sometimes come to the bank but it's it's mostly friends and family who want to you know contribute five thousand or ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand um at, at this level we don't see min, many individuals coming to us with angel investors or even VCs of into the millions of dollars at this level. We, we just don't see that. She's just curious about the difference there. Um, all righty. Thank you, Robert and uh, Lynn for helping us with this uh, portion here. It's uh, 1235. So I'm going to keep moving along with this presentation and uh, see if there's any questions at the end. Uh, if you're a small business, such as a, let's say like a construction company, they will they will need uh, bonding uh, to secure a contract. So SBA does also have a surety bonding program. Uh, if if uh, you're you're in that uh, sort of world where you you have um, the potential to win large contracts, you'll know what surety bonding is. And so just know that we do offer this service within the SBA network. Um, I mentioned on our website, there's a lender match tool. So yeah, sba.gov slash lender match. It'll ask you several questions. And if you answer the questions, like how much money do you need? What's it for? What type of business and industry you're in? It, if you submit an inquiry, um, banks that are interested in that inquiry, they will reply back and get back to you within a couple of days. So you can try that out. Um, okay. So uh, the SBA offers three C's and a D, uh, just to make, make it simple. Counseling, access to capital, and government contracting, along with disaster assistance. So that third C is government contracting. And just so you know, if you have something to sell to a, let's say, Department of Education, Department of Defense, um, the Small Business Admission, if you have something to sell to any federal government agency again this is different from state or city level government just for federal um you can get certified and try and sell your products and services what types of businesses well uh there's cleaning companies there's construction companies um there's uh, promotional product companies so uh government is the largest the federal government is the largest purchaser in the world okay and uh there are targets that the government needs to meet every year in that um, within that big pie, um, we need to make sure women-owned businesses get 5%. Uh, we have a certification program called HubZone uh, that deserves 3%, veterans 3%, service disabled, and, and, and so on. So um, if you're ready and you want to try and evaluate you know, your, your readiness, and to just to test the waters and see if this is something that your business can take advantage of. Um, definitely uh, check out some of our regular webinars. I want to say almost every month, our office led by Susan Laurie, one of our business development specialists, they, she does a couple webinars on government contracting intro, introduction, as well as one specifically on a program that we offer called 8A, Business Development. And so um, the 8A Business Development Program is, is a nine-year program. And uh, we are all about certifying those that are socially and economically disadvantaged. It could be a white male. Uh, however, the protected class socially uh, disadvantaged ethnicities are listed out here. And uh, you got to be a mature business. You got to be uh, in business for two years at least. Uh, 
I have written a success story about an 8A business uh, owner that uh, has done well. And uh, so this uh, is a picture of Tanya Johnson. She owns a cookie company. And uh, uh, it's called A Vision Sewn Ancient Baking Company. She's from Roxbury. Okay. And just like long story short, her, her son had some form of um, anemia anemic and so she started baking vegan cookies for him and she started this cooking company and started coming to our events and was exploring government contracts and said hey would my business be eligible for the 8a program and she applied and got into our program and so one of the things that she did was exploring food service contracts and um uh a couple years after getting certified i believe she landed a contract with um, Otis Air Force Base in Cape Cod. And uh, it's just amazing. I think uh, she's doing very well now and she's maybe midway in her uh, eight day, uh, nine year program. Um, and so it's just it's just a great success. Um, anything can happen. Government buys anything, they buy cookies. <laughs> so um, I like to talk about her and her success. We also have a certification called HubZone. This is a geography-based um, certification. Uh, so if your business is located in a specific uh, designated hub zone, we call it, you may qualify for this certification. And um, the way I like to explain this certification is uh, you get a 10% price preference on bidding on contracts. So if you get certified HubZone, let's say um, uh we are both bidding on contracts, your, your company and mine, but mine's is HubZone certified. Um, my bid will come out lower uh, because I'm certified, but, and I will win that contract because I'm HubZone certified. If, we, if we're bidding on the same amount, say scenario. And so, um, but I will get paid the full amount, you know, not, not less because of the HubZone certification, but, Long story short, if you uh, are in a geography, your business address is there and uh, you meet the other criteria listed below here, for example, then you could get the certification and possibly win contracts with this edge. Okay. Um, talk about the 8A. There's a website, certified.sba.gov. You could do a quick uh, readiness uh, inquiry here um, and uh, learn more about each one of our certifications, especially 8A, Women-Owned Small Business, and HubZone. Other thing we do is uh, international trade. So the SBA has a partner locally with the Massachusetts Export Center, which is a quasi-state government agency, and we partly fund them. And uh, every year they do this amazing event called the Export Expo. This year it's virtual. And it's held January 25th and 26th. If you're interested, please register on their website, mass.gov slash export. Uh, they typically held it at the uh, Massachusetts Transportation Building, downtown Boston. It's always a cool event, uh, but um, uh, this year will be held virtually. We also offer something called a STEP grant. It's a state trade expansion program grant uh, that assist and support small businesses trying to uh, sell their products and services overseas by uh, um, sort of um, taking uh, or addressing costs that uh, normally would inhibit a small business from, from trying. And we off also offer resources like technical assistance. There's something called um, um, International trade. There's an international trade office that also offers assistance. It's free technical assistance. But this step grant, it's about, I think it's 10 to 12K, to be honest. I don't know exactly off the top of my head right now. But it's administered by um, Moiti, Mass Office of International Trade. And um, it, it's a great way to open doors to other avenues for business development. And um, uh, if anybody's interested, definitely check out the Export Expo and you'll get connected to all of those um, 
community international trade folks that can help you. Okay, um, just wrapping up because it's a uh, quarter of. So follow us on X, formerly Twitter, at SBA underscore MA. Uh, as I showed you earlier, our webpage, our SBA.gov slash MA. We also love to get gain followers on LinkedIn. Uh, so definitely follow us on LinkedIn. And uh, disregard that last bullet, the subscribers. Uh, there's no way to subscribe right now. But um, I will try and add you by uploading the email list here. All right. Any? I do have a question. Um, yeah. What does the SBA consider disabled? Do mental or intellectual disabilities like ADHD count? Uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, us as being a federal agency, um. There's a definition, uh, and so if you go to ada.gov, I think you'll get the official response there. Um, and so I just sort of searched, an individual with a disability is defined by the ADA as a person who has a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities. A person who has a history or record of such impairment or a person who is perceived by others as having such an impairment. Um, I don't know if that answered it. Um, my mother, personally, has paranoid schizophrenia, and she receives assistance. She's mentally disabled. Um, so, is is there a follow up to that? Is is that person trying to apply for something in particular? Or um, yeah, I don't know who it was because they they submitted anonymously, but if they'd okay. like to put more information in we can yeah. expand on that if, if they needed nothing us to. to be ashamed of um and uh i have personal experience with that and uh i definitely have a um a soft spot for that feel free to reach out to me directly if 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 you need more assistance with that i'm throwing my email in the chat I do have some more questions. Uh, we're going to throw those out. Uh, yeah. I'm a technology consultant that currently works on a 1099. I want to incorporate and work via corp to corp contracts. I have no need for brick and mortar, but I do need money to pay for professional uh, support for my business and to cover travel for various engagements. As a subcontractor working for a uh, for a prime, I make $100 an hour. It sounds like a 7A wow. loan is the best choice. Where do I begin? I want to ask Lynn or Robert if they have any um, ideas for this subcontractor. $100 an hour is pretty good. Um, okay. I would Where contact I the bank. I would contact their bank or call a couple of banks, but maybe uh, depending, well, you know, it'd be interesting to see how long she's been in business for, but maybe um, like the SBA express or the micro loan might be, might be one or two ways to go about it. Okay. So a 1099 or could, yeah, could, but could be the express or the micro. I'm I'm thinking. Um, does the individual um, who asked the question do they have a business entity set up? That's a very good question. I um, I, I, I don't yeah. know. You would need a business business entity, correct? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it just says a 1099. Um, right. I mean, I I think there are some 10 to 9, 1099s who do have their own business entities set up um and they work with the various various companies de depending on their, their business i think i think i've come across that before in the past mm. you know and honestly it might be a great um uh, you know talk to a score mentor mm -hmm. so that they so you can yeah, discuss point. your whole situation and then they can help you get prepared to, to go to the bank make sure you have all your ducks in a row so to speak so that's kind of that's a good great resource for a score mentor Okay. Um, does SBA help when register their register their company? No, they do not. <laughs> the resource partners will help you direct you and give you, you know, you know, the yeah. pathway. But yes. you have to do it yourself, pretty much. You should. And do I yourself. can. 
And I can tell you that most of our SCORE mentors are going to say, please don't register your company as an LLC until you've talked to SCORE. Make sure you have your ducks in a row before you start paying the money to be a registered company. So that's what that's what most of our SCORE mentors are going to tell you. I have 100 bucks. Um, yeah, sure, yeah, company. exactly. Um, is there funding for small business owners who are listed under the ADA definition? Okay, this is a different person. Okay. Um, is there funding for small business funding? owners who are listed under? Uh, I believe, you know, you would go under the same bucket. You know, you would apply just as everyone else, correct? Right. Is it? Is that? I think that's the question. That's my, yeah, I, that's what I took it as. Um, and I'm assuming, yeah, it's really difficult when you, when I'm just to do our, to our attendees, when you submit anonymously, anonymous attendee, it's very difficult to string together multiple questions. Um, but I'm assuming this one, um, is the person that ha doesn't, was asking about those, the 1099, um, you mentioned that you're not, um, you've, you've done that in the past and that you've had a hard time with management, definitely score mentor again, is your answer to helping you stay on track. Um, does a restaurant startup often get approved for a, a business loan? Oh, I think Robert's typing an answer for that one. <laughs> Sorry, Thanks. I missed that. I was. Um, um, it's a very risky one. <laughs> yeah. So um, I wouldn't say often. I'd say sometimes. It depends on who the owner is and the application. Yeah. It, well, how it is how quite... would you answer that? Um, I, I have never come across this, but but restaurants are, are in that category um, where it's it, – the banks – look at restaurants as being very, very risky due to the, the failure rate. And we, we did, did see a lot of that um, due to COVID. Yes. Um, I, I know quite a few restaurants and other businesses that cater to restaurants, um, especially in the South End, um, did, did go out of business. Hmm. So it's a long road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I know a lot of restaurants – who have started up uh, from scratch, um, used, used their home equity, um, used their own savings, friends and family, until they got to a level where they, they could buy their building or, or or apply for an SBA line of credit. You got to bootstrap first and then demonstrate success, right, Robert? It, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. The best way. Yeah, not easy, but yeah. Yeah, Who we've got – uh, who We've is got screening five minutes for, left. Yep. Uh, who is screening for approval? The SBA or the bank? The so bank does the underwriting. The yep. bank does the underwriting, correct. Great. That was a good question. Okay. So, um, uh, we like to say that uh, you should go to the bank that you, you normally do your personal banking with first because they know you. And so that's another tip. Just like I have Citizens Bank for my personal bank, so I would go to Citizens Bank. To ask for a business loan. Yes, and that relationship can help, definitely. But it doesn't mean that you can't, you shouldn't go to it and try a different bank. True. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. I think that covers all our questions. Um, reminder if you're looking for a SCORE mentor, I know we hit it a couple times throughout that presentation, score.org, type in your zip code, it'll match you to a chapter. Um, we can help you out. If um, I believe that um, Norm did put his uh, information in there as well. And I will be sending out a follow-up email um, just to remind you how to contact uh, East Cambridge Savings Banks if you want to. Um, I will give you the record, will tell you where to find the recording. And um, hey, uh, Teresa, before we end, yeah. I just want to show our viewers something really cool and like hidden. Uh, you could find your own mentor by going to score.org backslash Boston and then click find a mentor up here this this first tab and uh, scroll down and you could find over here schedule an in-person meeting or self-schedule but I think self-schedule brings you to this cool calendar I really love this Teresa this is my favorite thing about Boston scores how you guys set this up but um, you can click on a date for example um, next Thursday and you could see all the different counselors available and their different times. And if you click on someone's name, it tells you their experience and counselor skill set. And so you can really drill down and find the right counselor for you this way. 
And I think this is one of the most magnificent uh, things that Boston score does. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. And and if you're not sure and you don't want to self schedule, hit, click the button under there. And Ashley, I'm the person that will oh. help you match to the, a mentor. So if you're not sure, um, go ahead and put that request in, in your information and I can help you figure out who, who would be a good match for you. So you, yeah, you're absolutely right. You have both options and they're great. Um, does the SBA offer help with compliancy with government contracts, for example, um, DFARs and CMMCs, cybersecurity? Offer help with compliancy with government contracts. I would say that uh, you may want to visit one of our um, technical assistance providers at um, Apex Accelerators. And I'll throw the link in the chat. It's just, it's just msbdc.org. But um, our Apex Accelerators um, are the ones that this inquiry will, will fall under. So not the SBA specifically, but one of our resource partners. I, I just threw it in the webinar chat there. So there's you could schedule a meeting with someone at Apex Accelerators, okay? Um, they have a uh, one, last question. Um, this is a SBA slash bank question. Do um, Is there funding for um, people that flip real estate? Uh, I don't think so. I, no, I, no, 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 not, not at all, no. I believe the 7A can be used to buy commercial real estate, but not for flipping purposes, no. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, this was a fantastic presentation. I think everyone learned a lot on this call. And um, you, you got some resources there in the chat that were put out. I will do a follow-up email with making sure you have a copy of all those um, emails and links. And um, thanks, everybody. And have a great rest of your week. Thank you. Thanks.